Asthma comes from the Greek word for panting, which makes sense because it causes chronic inflammation of the airways, making them narrow and more difficult to breathe through. People with asthma can have asthma exacerbations or asthma attacks, which are usually triggered by something in the environment which causes immune cells to generate inflammation in the lungs, which can make them even narrower and potentially be life-threatening. So if we take a look at the lungs, you've got the trachea, which branches off into the right and left bronchi, and then continues to branch into thousands of bronchioles. In the bronchioles, you've got the lumen, the mucosa, which includes the inner lining of epithelial cells, as well as the lamina propria, and the submucosa, which is where the smooth muscle lives. In asthma, there are typically lots of eosinophils just below the epithelium in the lamina propria. Eosinophils are white blood cells that carry a cargo of granules full of soluble chemical mediators like histamines, leukotrienes, prostaglandin, and platelet activating factor. When these eosinophils sense an environmental trigger like cigarette smoke in the airway, they can release their granules, letting those chemical mediators spill out and start degrading lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids, literally destroying all the major cell components. This creates a strong inflammatory reaction in the bronchiolar walls and causes two changes. First, smooth muscles around the bronchioles start to spasm, which narrows the airway. And second, there's increased mucus secretion into those narrow airways, narrowing them even more, which when these are combined makes it really hard to breathe. And this is why asthma is considered a type of obstructive pulmonary disease. Initially, these inflammatory changes are completely reversible. But over the years, irreversible changes start to take place. Edema, scarring, and fibrosis build up, leading to thickening of the epithelial basement membrane, which permanently reduces the airway diameter. Alright, but why do some people have lots of eosinophils and create inflammation in response to a trigger in the first place? Well, type 2 helper T cells, or Th2 cells, which is an immune cell subtype, is known to be involved in asthma as well as atopic dermatitis and allergic rhinitis, making up what's called the atopic triad. These Th2 cells release cytokines to communicate with other cells. One cytokine is interleukin-5, which is a small peptide that attracts and activates eosinophils. It turns out that blocking interleukin-5 has been shown to help some patients with asthma. On the other hand, there are patients with asthma that have low levels of Th2 cells, but high levels of another class of immune cells. Neutrophils. Neutrophils are highly inflammatory phagocytic cells that gobble up infected or dead cells. How neutrophils promote asthma, though, isn't known. But another interleukin, interleukin 8, which is released by neutrophils, seems to play a key role in the disease. Patients with a neutrophilic disease tend to have a more severe form of asthma than patients with Th2 eosinophilic asthma. Although the specific causes of asthma are ultimately unknown, it's thought to be caused by a combination of genetic and environmental factors, since certain genes have been identified that increase the risk of developing asthma, and having a family history of asthma seems to increase the risk as well. For environmental factors, there's the hygiene hypothesis, which suggests that reduced early immune system exposure to bacteria and viruses might actually increase the risk of later developing asthma possibly by altering the overall proportion of immune cell subtypes. In general, causes of childhood asthma diagnosed before age 12 are thought to be due to a stronger genetic influence, whereas later onset asthma is more likely to be due to environmental factors. Now, the triggering substance that leads to an asthma attack can differ from person to person, but some common ones include air pollution, like cigarette smoke and car exhaust, as well as allergens like dust, pet dander, cockroaches, and mold. Medications like aspirin and beta blockers have also been known to trigger symptoms in some individuals with asthma. That said, symptoms of asthma include <coughs> coughing, a feeling of chest tightness, dyspnea or difficulty breathing, and wheezing or a high-pitched whistling sound that usually happens during exhalation. Occasionally in the spittum, there might be Kirschman spirals, which are spiral-shaped mucus plugs, or basically elongated mucus casts, from the small bronchi of people with bronchial asthma. Mucus plugs can be particularly dangerous because they not only block exchange of air, but they also block inhaled medications from getting to the site of inflammation. 
The mucus might also have charcoal-laden crystals, which are shaped like needles and are formed by the breakdown of eosinophils. Now, asthma can be classified according to the frequency of symptoms, in particular nighttime and early morning symptoms, the FEV1, or forced expiratory volume in one second, the PEFR, or peak expiratory flow rates, both of which measure the amount of obstruction in the airways, and finally, how often a person is using asthma medication to help with the symptoms. From least to most severe, the types of asthma are intermittent asthma, mild persistent asthma, moderate persistent asthma, and finally, severe persistent asthma. While there's no cure for asthma, there are treatments available that can help manage the symptoms and prevent the development of an asthma attack. First, people with asthma should avoid or minimize contact with triggering substances by vacuuming, removing carpets and rugs, and changing the environmental conditions, like for example drying out a room in the case of molds that grow well in moist areas. There are also a number of medications that can reduce the symptoms of asthma. Bronchodilators like short-acting beta-adrenoceptor agonists and anticholinergic medications are often administered through emergency inhalers. These fast-acting medications cause the smooth muscles in the lungs to relax and therefore dilate the airways, opening them up so that the person can breathe. Individuals with more severe forms of asthma might need additional treatments like daily corticosteroids, long-acting beta-adrenoceptor agonists, or leukotriene antagonists. In very severe cases, intravenous corticosteroids, magnesium sulfate, and oxygen therapy might be needed. All right, as a quick recap, asthma is characterized by chronic inflammation in the lungs, as well as asthma exacerbations or attacks, where certain triggers start up more inflammation, which leads to smooth muscle spasms and mucus production, both of which make it hard to breathe. 